Hello and thank you for watching. My name is John and welcome to Crash Course in Maya version 2011 Bones and Joint Series Section 3 Modifying an Existing Joint Chain. In this video I'm going to discuss how to modify an existing joint chain by adding a joint in, inside the chain, removing a joint from inside the chain, connecting a joint to the chain, and extending a pre-existing chain. In addition I'm going to uh, talk about when to move and when to rotate and why. In addition, I'm going to discuss how to uh, move a joint inside the chain without affecting its children and affecting the rest of the chain. I'm also going to touch base on some attributes such as some drawing styles, some labels you can add on the joints, and some limits you can apply to the joints. So let's get started. This is Molly. She is an older model of mine. Uh, I added in a quick skeleton for her just for these purposes and I'll be using her and this skeleton throughout a number, of a number of these tutorials for this series. First thing that I noticed was uh, her hand and her joints. The joints are actually really large. You can't even tell what joint is what. So like in the previous video, you just go to display, you go to animation, joint size, and turn that down to approximately, oh, we'll do one, two, three is fine. Just so we know that what joint is what. Now that we have that done, we also can't see the joints now that they're inside the inside the mesh. So we're actually going to go to shading, X-ray. Now that we're uh, working with mesh and bones, we actually don't want to select the mesh at all. So I have Molly herself inside a layer, which is also referenced, so I can't actually select her at all. So the first scenario I actually have open is uh, the fact that if you look at her elbow you'll notice that she's missing her elbow joint and when she moves her shoulder you'll notice that her hands stay behind and she's also missing a few fingers. We're going to take care of all of that with these steps. One, we're going to start fixing the elbow. This is going to be using the, uh, a tool called the insert joint tool. That is uh, a tool that will insert joints inside uh, a pre-existing bone. So all I gotta do is go to skeleton insert joint tool. Left click and hold on the bone that you want the joint to be inserted in and you'll see everything kind of pop up. Now when you move the mouse to the left or the right you'll see the bone start to follow the mouse but at the same time follow the bones alignment. There you go, there's another one there. But uh oh, it looks like I created one too many bones already inside the chain and if I delete it I'm going to delete the entire chain. So we can't do that. So we actually have to delete this bone without affecting the rest of the chain. So just select on that bone, skeleton, remove joint, and that will delete that joint from the uh, chain without affecting the rest. Now that we have an elbow, let's go over here where the fingers are detached. This is going to be using a, a tool called connect joint, which is under skeleton connect joint, but before you click anything, go ahead and go to the option box, and we'll get this. And uh, let me just reset the settings. There's connect joint and parent joint. We're going to, uh, this is, you're going to uh, select the child and the parent, which is the finger to the hand. If you uh, select connect joint, you are actually going to move the finger to the hand, as seen here. Obviously, we did not want that result, so I'm going to undo. If you push parent, you're actually going to create a bone from the hand to the finger, like this so. And if you uh, select the finger, toggle select the hand, you can actually apply multiple joint, uh, multiple bones, multiple branches. So I'm going to close that out. Another way to do it is actually just physically parent it. Not a parent constraint, but physically parent. There is a difference. So I'm going to select the bone, toggle select the hand, and push the P key. And that will create a bone there. Another way to do it is actually uh, through the outliner, which I will show you. The problem with doing it with the outliner is it's a little more safe because you can actually physically see what's going on. But when you have a hierarchy like this, you're going to have to dig through quite a bit to find it. So I'm just going to shift and push that plus sign, and that's going to open up everything. And what I have selected will be a more prominent highlight, which is the arm palm. Also, please note my naming convention. I have a very clean naming convention, as uh, there is a reason which we explain later. So you got the palm here. Here's the pinky. 
and I'm just going to middle mouse drag to that uh, joint. Oh, where is it? If you didn't uh, put a name convention, you would have absolutely no idea where it's at. So B arm palm, there it is. Release, and after a moment, it will actually create a bone, put it in its hierarchy, and you're set to go. Next, I'm going to apply and extend her joint, her fingers, her joint chain. So I'm just going to go to the joint tool, go to the option box, because in the previous video I manipulated the heck out of it. To extend a joint chain, all you got to do is select the joint, and it'll automatically, from there on out, extend the joint chain, just like, you, uh, just like in the previous video. But when it comes to something like the finger, what I do is I select the joint chain to initialize the start of the joint, and I go to the end. Then I actually use the insert joint tool and create my segments. The reason why I do this is it creates everything as straight as it possibly be, can be. Whereas if you're doing it from eye and by hand, you're going to get crookedness, which will cause undesired results, especially in rotations. So now that we have our hand attached, well, it looks like the elbow is in the wrong place. Well, you can always move the elbow, but as you notice, it moved the entire hand. We don't want that. Well, there's a method of actually moving your elbow, or moving a joint in general inside a chain, without affecting the entire chain. That is by going to the pivot. The way you can go to the pivot is by pushing the insert key, and that will toggle from normal mode to pivot mode, and as you saw on the manipulator, it actually changed from arrows to lines, say. Or you can hold down the D key. And as long as it's held down, you're going to be in pivot mode. And when you release, it's going to go back to normal mode. And if you're in pivot mode from insert, and you hold down the D key, it's going to go from pivot mode to normal mode. And when you release the D key, it's going to go back to uh, the pivot mode. So go to pivot mode, and let's move the elbow where we want it to be. So. The difference between move and rotate, especially with joints, and this is going to be pretty crucial when it comes to animating, is when you move, you will notice that the joints are actually stretching. I'm sorry, the bones are actually stretching. I don't know about you, but my ulna and my radius don't stretch. My humerus is pretty much the same size. I have no idea why or how that would happen. So, moving is a no-no when it comes to animating. When you animate, you're going to uh, use the rotation tool which will actually keep your bones the same length all throughout, as you can see here. The only time you're going to want to move is when you're actually putting your joints in the position that you want them to be, as you saw when I did the, uh, the rest. Alright, so now that we have our joints on that location, everything's attached, her fingers are attached, she no longer is missing fingers, that's great. Now I'm going to show a couple of things that will actually help you with terms of general rigging. This isn't going to go into great detail of rigging because I want to actually create an entire series based on rigging, but this will actually give you a heads up on what's going to happen a little later. So I'm actually going to hide the Molly model, and now I have a bunch of bones and joints that unless I select and look up here, I don't know exactly what's going on, like down here. I selected I wanted the hand, I got the wrist. What, uh, if you add in the twist, you don't know if you got the twist of the elbow. So, there's a way of actually adding labels to uh, the 3D space, the uh, window, so you don't have to select and you know exactly what's what and where. And especially for more complex rigs, complex bone setups, this might be pretty important to add markers and guidelines. So, select on your joint and go to the attribute editor. Let's explore this a little bit. First thing I'd like to note is the rotation order. This is exactly the same thing as I mentioned in the uh, joint creation tool. When you open it up, you'll notice the same axes are there. Moving down, you'll also notice that there's a radius. The radius is the exact same thing as the second half of the joint creation tool. If you go 1, you'll actually increase it. So if you go 10, it's going to make it gigantuan but I'm just going to make it go back to its original size. Degrees of freedom is the exact replicate of what's happening, so if I, un if I uncheck X, that means I cannot move on the X axis, just like the, uh, the tool itself. 
It's down here. It's right here. Down here, I want to actually discuss for a moment. Joint labeling. This is going to create a label inside the perspective or any window that you have to, so you can uh, visually see what it is without having to select it. We are actually going to go to type and once you go to type you'll actually notice there's a couple of uh, human components going on such as the hip and the knee. These are very common components used for bones as uh, a majority of the reason why people would use bones in the first place is actually to rig some sort of uh, creature like a biological creature, whether it be a quadruped, a biped, etc. This is a shoulder, so I'm just going to put a shoulder. Now, nothing's there until you uh, check draw label. And when you do that, you'll notice shoulder pops up. Since there's a left and a right shoulder, you can always go to the side and click on left. It'll change colors. In addition, it's going to put an L in parentheses. Now the shoulder is going to say the same size as you can see, so when you're way far away you can still see that that is the shoulder joint. And when you unselect it, it is still there. You can also use it for the hand joint or the knee joint. So I'm just going to, sorry, the elbow joint, so I'm just going to push E to go down to the elbow. There you go. I'm going to draw a label. I'm going to have it on the left side. You can also have have it say whatever you want. This is by going to type, type an O for other, and you can type whatever you want. And when you push draw label, whatever you want will show up as the label. Now that you have it all labeled, let's kind of manipulate what the bone actually looks like. So we're going to scroll up a little bit to the joint, to the draw, uh, draw style. This is where you can actually change it from a bone to a circle, or a circle facing a, a certain direction, to a very thick and very prominent stick, to a square. Now, I actually would uh, dissuade, I, I would, I'll try to dissuade uh, you actually using these and stick with the default bone style like I do, because when you actually start creating controls and rigs, you're going to use something like a circle for a controller and if you have your joint as a circle you may get confused on this being a joint versus this this being a bone. Now if you were not creating a uh, control system to keep them with an FK uh, uh, rig explain another series you might want to use that but I personally use bones only. Now limits. Limits are uh, limits. I mean, I don't know how else to explain it. They limit your movement. So, I don't know, I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't know the last time my elbow went that direction. So you actually want to make sure your elbow doesn't go past certain points. So with that being said, I'm actually going to make sure my elbow doesn't go past this. And uh, if you looked at uh, joint labeling, uh, you're going to go to limit information. When you uh, open that up, scroll down, you'll notice that the rotation is current right here, and you'll see ro uh, rot limit, rot limit, rot limit, etc. in these checkboxes, in these arrows. If you push the, one of the arrows, this value is going to translate over to here, like so. Now, just because that number is there doesn't mean it's not limited until you push the checkbox. Now, I cannot go past that point. Now we're going to do the same for this time. And we'll just do that right there just because push the left arrow, which uh, move this value to over here, and I can still move it further until I push that limit. So now I can't move it anywhere except between those limits. Now with that being said, that's the rotate Y, so I'm actually, I actually don't want my elbow to move up and down like that, so I'm going to turn off my degrees of freedom, X and Z. So now my elbow can only move on one angle where I want it to. That does it for this video. I discussed how to add, subtract, parent, and extend joint chains. I explained why and how to move and rotate joints, as well as uh, a single joint in a chain. And I uh, briefly described uh, drawing labels and limits. Next video is a very important video, which uh, goes over the joint orientation, why it's important, uh, second axis world orientation, automatic and manual orientation, the difference between them and why you should do it, when you should do it, and a little bit of mouse scripting. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.